Ladies and gentlemen, I recently did a story on an 11 year old that was arrested for refusing to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, I wanted to go and do some more digging on this infamous Pledge of Allegiance that everyone is losing their minds over. So let me give you some history that some of you may know, some may not. This is on history, ushistory.org, the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance was written in August 1892 by the socialist minister, Francis Bellamy, 1855 to 1931. Uh, it was originally published in the Youth Companion on September 8th, 1892. Bellamy had hoped the pledge would be used by citizens in any country. So he wanted this to be a global pledge originally. In its original form, it read, I pledge allegiance to the flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So that's the original pledge of allegiance that was intended to be recited globally. In 1923, the words, the flag of the United States of America were added. At this time it read, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. In 1954, in response to the communist threat of the times, President Eisenhower encouraged Congress to add the words under God creating the 31-word pledge we say today. Bellamy's daughter objected to this alteration. Today it reads, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Section 4 of the Flag Code states, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, should be rendered by standing at attention, facing the flag, with, listen to this, the right hand over the heart. Now, it was not always that way. And I'm going to show you some pictures. And you're going to realize what it really looks like. I know exactly what you're all going to say. When not in uniform, men should remove any non-religious headrests with uh, the right hand and holding it at the left shoulder and hand being over the heart. Persons in uniform should remain silent, face the flag and render the military salute. So if you are not in uniform, you know, if you got anything on your head, you're supposed to remove it and place your hand over your heart if you are military, you are supposed to salute. All right, moving on. The original Bellamy salute, first described in 1892 by Francis Bellamy, who authored the original pledge, began with a military salute. And after citing the words to the flag, the arm was extended towards the flag. What does that extended arm remind you of? Extended arm towards the flag. At a signal from the principal, the pupils in order ranked, hands to the side, face the flag, 
another signal is given. Every pupil gives the flag the military salute, right hand lifted, palm downward. So extend your right arm with your palm facing to the floor. Extend your arm with your palm facing to the floor. What does that look like? <laughs> yeah, I know what y'all thinking. Okay. To align with the forehead. So the arm is, the right arm is extended with the palm facing downward and it has to be aligned with your forehead. and close to it. Standing thus, all repeating together slowly, I pledge allegiance to the flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. At the words to my flag, the right hand is extended gracefully, palm upward towards the flag and remains in this gesture till the end of the affirmation, whereupon all hands immediately drop to the side. The Youth's Companion, 1892. Shortly thereafter, the pledge was begun with the right hand over the heart and after reciting to the flag. The arm was extended towards the flag, palm down. In World War II, the salute too much resembled the Nazi salute, so it was changed to keep the right hand over the heart throughout. So, ladies and gentlemen, here are the pictures. This is the original salute to the flag. The original salute to the American flag. It is the exact same thing that you see when you saw the Germans doing the Nazi salute. It wasn't until this extended arm with the palm down, leveled with your forehead, became tarnished by the Germans, then it changed to the hand over the heart. This is just some more great American history that has been buried, ladies and gentlemen. So now you know. There was really no big distinction in how the Nazi salute looks and how the original salute for the American flag looks. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Wonder why they kept us hidden, y'all. Hmm. Peace, family.